Psalm 23. Um, we are up to verse 5. So if you haven't been around the last few weeks, um, we've been looking at Psalm 23. We've been going through it verse by verse and so much great stuff has come out of it. I hope you agree with that. We've learned a whole lot more than we knew before about sheep um, and there's going to be some more today. Um, but this is rich and I believe that God really wants to use it in our lives at the moment. So let me read up to um, from the beginning up to where we've got to so far at verse five. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And here we go, verse five. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. So I thought until I started studying this week that the whole shepherd picture kind of changed at this point in the psalm until I um, uh, until I read around a bit. And then I realized that actually I think what it's talking about or what David's talking about as a shepherd is that the sum we're, we're changing season here, if you like. We've but we talked Callum talked last week about the valley that was described in verse four, and in verse five we have a change of season, and we're going into the summer higher pasture lands, if you like. So they're often called the table lands, um, table mountain and table lands, the higher summer pasture lands that the sheep get led to where the lush grazing is, and I think that's probably what David is talking about here when he talks about the table being set out before the sheep, if you like. So, and the key thing with these lush pasture lands that the shepherd is leading us into here in verse five is that these in themselves, these times of blessing and favour and knowing the provision of God, which contrast with the valley of verse four, what we need to be careful about is not to think that they are not without danger and to become complacent and kind of relax and laid back. The first thing we need to understand actually is that as we come into uh, better seasons, if you like, seasons that are more comfortable where there's obvious blessing, um, actually that we need to know that the shepherd has gone ahead of us. So he's prepared this table for us. OK, it's not that um, we've sorted anything out. It's only because the shepherd has gone ahead that there's a times of blessing and provision. So actually what what I've learned this week is that, you know, these lush pasture lands, there'll be poisonous plants. There'll be some areas that are better for the sheep than others. And the shepherd's gone ahead and found the good grazing land. He's taken away the poisonous plants. He's cleared out the blocked water holes. So the shepherd has gone ahead. And in our lives as well, when we get to the good times, please don't forget the Bible is saying, David is saying in this Psalm that the shepherd has gone ahead of us to prepare these things for us. But also that even in the good times, we're still in the presence of enemies. So in this life, we are still in a battleground and we need to be alert to the danger. So 1 Peter tells us, doesn't it? 1 Peter 5, this is, he says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. So even in the good times, we need to be alert and aware that there are dangers and we need to stick close to the shepherd. Basically, that's the message. Stick close to the shepherd, whether things seem to be going well or not because we're in a battleground there. We have an enemy who would love to pick us off if we stray from the from the rest of the flock, even when times when uh, things seem good and the provision seems to be bountiful, if you like, make sure you stick close to the shepherd. And I think this is so key for us in these days as we think about uh, next year, as we think about things maybe beginning to open up. Callum was saying last week, wasn't he, that we've been through in many ways valley times in, in lots of different ways in this last season. But actually, even as things on the face of it may start to improve, that's the very time, I believe, that we need to 
stay close to the shepherd. It's the, it's the times where we get complacent, where things seem to be going well, that we're tempted to kind of lean back on our own strength. But I believe that God would say, no, no, that's the very time when we need to be alert to danger and we need to stick close to our shepherd and make sure that uh, our relationship with him is strong. So even as uh, there was that passage in Isaiah this morning that came out in the prayer meeting, Isaiah 42, um, which actually a, a little bit further on in verse 16 talks about God leading the blind in a long unfamiliar paths. And I think in many ways, we're, we know we're going into a new era. We, need, we know that in, we're not going back to many of the things uh, that we knew before. There's going to be some unfamiliar paths for us in the days ahead. But God's promise is that he will lead us, but we need to stick close to the shepherd. Okay, the next thing, you anoint my head with oil. Now, it turns out, uh, those of us who know a lot about sheep, which I didn't until this week, but I do now, um, it turns out that one of the key dangers in the summer is all the flies and the bugs um, that pester the sheep uh, when they're in their summer grazing lands. And what the shepherd does is that he comes up with a mixture of oil and chemicals and he puts it all over the sheep's head uh, to stop these flies that get in their nose and make the, you know, bury and have their eggs in the sheep's brain or I don't know it's, it sounds pretty nasty but anyway the, uh, if the flies do that the sheep go crazy they get frustrated they bang their head against stuff but what the shepherd does is he comes and well literally anoints their head with oil puts oil on and chemicals and so we've got this amazing picture of the oil of the holy spirit of God putting the oil of the spirit on us when those little things come along in life, there's when there's frustrations or when there's fears or anxieties or the things that bug us, the things that get in the way, actually, those are the moments where we dig in and we get we ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes and um, brings us that salve and anoints us in those, uh, in those moments. The other key thing about this picture, I guess, is the whole sense of that relationships are key. Um, so the anointing head with oil is what people did in in Bible times when they um, went to one another's houses. So if you're if you were showing hospitality to someone and you had, had someone around your house, then you anointed their head with oil. So um, if you want to know more about that, Luke seven forty six, it's where um, the the woman puts the perfume on Jesus's feet and he says to the to his host, "You didn't anoint my head with oil." So anointed the head with oil is a key in relationships. And also that we have that picture, don't we, from the Psalms about um, about the unity amongst God's people being a blessing like oil poured on the head. So the Holy Spirit is key, not only in those little niggles and fears that that will that potentially get in the way, um, get in our way and frustrate us and uh, mess up our relationship with God, if you like. But also with one another, we need the spirit to come because it's so easy for uh, the enemy, if you like, to get in in our relationships. And uh, so it's key that we're filled with the spirit, that we're anointed, that our heads are anointed with oil. So whether whether you're in a valley right now, whether you feel like you're in a mountaintop, but and in the days ahead, whether we go through good times or we go through bad times, the key thing is to stick close to the shepherd and to be full of the spirit, to have our heads anointed with oil. Um, and, you know, I'm convinced that one of the key things it's one of the things that I feel like I keep praying at the moment that God would fill me with faith. You know, when anxieties come or insecurities come or fears, actually, the, the key thing of this whole shepherd picture, really, is that that we would be convinced and that our faith would be strong of God's goodness towards us. We were singing it earlier, weren't we? That let the glory of your goodness come to me. And it's so key that we're full of faith about this amazing shepherd that we have, this shepherd who cares for us, who makes sure that we shall not want, who even in the good times has gone ahead to prepare this, this, this place of blessing for us. And, and we, it's so key that we're full of faith and convinced about the goodness of the shepherd to us. Whether we're in a valley or, or on a mountaintop, let's stick close to him and let's be filled with the spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And all the time through this, 
I want to just remind you, it, th this, this verse reminds me of, I don't know if you remember those pi pictures, I don't know if you can still get them. You know those pictures where if you tilt them, you see a slightly different picture or it's moved. You tilt it one way and you see one picture and you tilt it the other way, you see another picture. This verse is like that for me because there is another table and there is another cup which has made possible this amazing love and care of our shepherd for us. So the table of the Lord's Supper, the table... Uh, the cup of Jesus's suffering, his sacrifice in our place is the only reason why there is such amazing care and, and that the shepherd has gone ahead of us. And so we need to keep remembering that actually, that it's because of his death and resurrection, it's because of his sacrifice in our place, it's because of his cup of suffering that we have this cup of blessing, that we are secure, whatever our circumstances, that we know that the shepherd is watching over us and that he's got our back. And that leads us to the final point of this of this verse, my cup overflows. And I think Ant really said it just now. You know, we are a people who have been amazingly blessed and we have all these opportunities before us right now. We've been talking about starting point. We've been talking about um, small things with great love, the opportunities that we have at Christmas. We've been talking about the toy appeal. Uh, but, you know, this is not about striving. This is about allowing the goodness of God to penetrate our hearts, being convinced of his care for us and allowing our cup to overflow because we've been blessed. We've been provided for. We're secure. We, he's promised that he's gone ahead of us. We're hemmed in behind and before. He's got everything covered, even when we don't see it. And so we're in a place where our cup then can overflow. And it's not through striving. It's not through working hard. It's just allowing the spirit of God to overflow from us wherever we go, whatever mood we're in, whatever day we're having, that our cup should overflow, that we know we're so blessed and we and, and we allow the spirit to overflow from us to those around us. Amen. I think that'll do. Um, let's pray. I'd love to. Can I go on and pray, Al? Is that all right? I'm not going to um, stop you praying, Nigel, no. <laughs> okay. Let, I, I really want to pray specifically for, I just feel like, for um, three categories. Um, the first category is is those who are bugged by something. So this is the picture of the bugs on the sh around the sheep's head. If you're bugged by a fear or an anxiety about something, or there's a frustration or relationship that's not working properly, I want to pray for the Holy Spirit to be upon you and to anoint you today. Um, the second thing is just those that want to know at a new level, this confidence in God's care, whether you're going through good times or bad times, that we would be confident in God's care, his shepherding of us. Um, and that is Paul's prayer, really, that we would know the depth and the breadth of his love for us. Um, if that's you, I'd love to pray for you. And the third thing is this, those who just want to... Um, I guess, move into those new opportunities to overflow with the blessing of God and, and the spirit of God to those around us, whether it be neighbours at Christmas or whether it be through mentoring somebody in starting point. Let's pray for that God would fill us and not that we would strive, but that we'd be full of the spirit and allow God to lead us um, and to use us in the days ahead. So if that's you, any of those things particularly or anything else, can I just uh, invite you just to Maybe close your eyes, maybe put your hands out. Let's just ask God now to fill us with his spirit in these days. Lord, we know that these are significant days in your purposes and in your kingdom. And Lord, we just want to be, we want to be ready for what you want to do with us in these days. Lord, I just want to pray that you would come now, Holy Spirit. Lord, where there's those things that bug us, Lord, those little things that get in the way and uh, real irritants, Lord, whether it be a fear or an anxiety, I just want to speak to those amongst your people today. And I want to say, go in the name of Jesus and let that oil of the spirit come now. Lord, would you convince us of your love and its magnitude and the fact that it is all encompassing, it covers everything, that you've gone ahead of us, that you've prepared good things for us, that you, even when we don't know the path, Lord, that, that you lead us where we're blind, you lead us on unfamiliar paths. Lord, come and reveal the depth of your love to us this morning, I pray. Lord, may that sink right into our hearts as your people or whatever we're feeling this morning. And Lord, where there's opportunities before us, and if we're just saying, Lord, we, we would love to be used by you. We want to be full of your spirit. We want to be those who convey and um, display, but also invite others into your kingdom. Lord, we want to be kingdom advancers in our day. Lord, help us. 
Help us just to be natural with that, not to have to strive, but Lord, fill us with your spirit that we might overflow. And Lord, just as Anne has uh, just testified so amazingly, Lord, would you give us those opportunities just to be full of you and go with the flow and see what you would do amongst us in these days. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.